All right, day two of 8-7. We are on to solve systems of conics using algebra instead of graphing. We should remember that when we solve systems of linear equations, of lines, we found that not all the answers come out nicely, so solving by graphing isn't necessarily the best method. So let's remember solving systems. We have a whole bunch of different methods, but the real basic ones are substitution and elimination. Now for lines, we would a lot of times want to just use elimination, but that doesn't always work for conics. In order to use elimination, both equations need to have like terms. So like we can't add these equations together because this y to the first can't be added to y to the second. So you can't use elimination for this one. So you're going to have to use substitution. So if y equals x, then wherever there's an x, you could put a y, or wherever there's a y, you could plug in an x. And it doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm going to plug the x in for the y. So I'm going to take this x and plug it in for those y's. So I would have x squared plus x squared equals 4. Well, 1x squared plus 1x squared is 2x squared divide by 2 take the square root of both sides and we get x is equal to plus or minus root 2. Now that means that x could be either of those. So you take those two answers, x equals root 2 or x equals negative root 2 and substitute back in to figure out y. Well, you can plug them back into either equation. I think that plugging back into y equals x is probably the easiest one. So if you plug back in, you'll get y is equal to root 2. So this answer would be root 2 comma root 2, or y would be equal to negative root 2. So the other answer is negative root 2 comma negative root 2, and those are your two solutions. Now remember, what would we do if we were graphing this? This top one would be a line, and this would be a circle. So does it make sense to get two solutions? If you have a circle with a line, you get two possible solutions. They just don't hit in a very nice spot. So you wouldn't be able to get these answers if you did it by graphing. But you want to make sure your answer makes sense. All right, in example number two, you can use elimination because you have x squared and y squared in both equations. So you can do this with elimination. Well, I'm going to eliminate the y's. So let's multiply the bottom one by 4. So the top one doesn't change. x squared minus 4y squared equals 4. But the bottom one becomes 4x squared plus 4y squared equals 16. So we add that together, we'll get 5x squared equals 20. Divide by 5. x squared is 4. Take the square root and get plus or minus 2. So we take those answers and we want to plug them back in. So x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. Now again, you can plug them back into either one that you want. So I'm going to plug them into this top one. x squared minus 4y squared equals 4. Now I'm plugging 2 in to x. So that's going to be 4 minus 4y squared equals 4. Subtract 4. Negative 4y squared equals 0. y squared would equal 0. So y would equal 0. Now you don't put plus or minus because it's a 0. Now if you plug in negative 2, you're going to get also a positive 4 minus 4y squared equals 4. This process is all going to be the same and you're also going to get y equals 0. So your solutions for this one would be 2, 0 or negative 2, 0. And we should make sure that makes sense. Could you get two solutions? This top one is a hyperbola and the bottom one is a circle. Hyperbola because it's negative. So if we have a hyperbola and a circle, 
Well, that would make you get four answers, but we only got two. So is it possible? A hyperbola and a circle. Is it possible to just get two answers? Well, what if you just um, draw your circle right in here? And so then you would get this answer and this answer. So it is possible. So you kind of have to think a little bit outside the box there. And how would you draw it to get just two answers? All right, the last one has a lot of algebra in it. Okay, so you got to be really good with your algebra. You're going to have to use substitution because they don't both have x squared or y squared. So we're going to substitute this negative 2x plus 2 in for y. So we have 3 times negative 2x plus 2 plus 2 squared minus 4 times x minus 3 squared equals 12. Combine like terms, so negative 2x plus 4 squared minus 4 times x minus 3 squared equals 12. So I need to FOIL these parentheses. Now remember, you get a middle term here, so you should know how to do this quickly. 3 times first term squared, 4x squared. Multiply them, get negative 8, and multiply it by 2, get negative 16. Plus, square the last, 16. Minus 4, you got to do it again. Square the first, multiply it by 2, negative 6x, square it, 9. Now distribute. Some people will make the mistake and distribute first. You have to FOIL first. So 12x squared minus 48x plus 48 minus 4x squared plus 24x minus 36 equals 12. So we end up with 8x squared minus 24x plus 12 equals 12. Well, we know how to solve quadratics, but they have to be equal to 0. So you should do, subtract your 12 and get 8x squared minus 24x equals 0. Now, what are the ways we know how to solve quadratics? Well, the easiest way is factoring. Otherwise, you can use your formula. I'm going to tell you that factoring is going to be your easiest method. Take out 8x and get x minus 3 equals 0. So we know x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 3. Now plug into one of these. Well, I'm going to pick that bottom one because that's easier. Negative 2x plus 2. If x is 0, then y would be 2, so you get 0, 2. If x is 3, you get y equals negative 6 plus 2. y would be negative 4, so 3, negative 4. These are your two solutions. So again, you want to think about this. Um, that's going to be a hyperbola, because it's a minus, and that's going to be a line. A hyperbola and a line. Can you get two answers? Sure. One right there and one right there. So it makes sense.